Man, let's get right into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast. Coach Kotlin here. Andrew Schultz was on the podcast. There was an awkward moment at around 20 minutes where they freeze and Joe's looking at his phone and then they start talking about Andrew Huberman. I imagine what you're about to see is a text from Andrew Huberman saying, yes, you can talk about this situation. He probably needed to make sure everything was good and on the up and up so he can actually so Joe could actually bring this up now if you don't know what happened with Andrew Huberman there has been a smear campaign a bit of a a a hit piece written on Andrew Huberman okay now it's very interesting I say smear campaign because there's been more than one thing this article that they're talking about is about (laughs) Andrew Huberman's love escapades He's a ladies' man, apparently, guys. The guys who, the guy who is tatted up and muscular and super smart and rich, happens to be a ladies' man. My mind's blown. I've never seen anything like that before. But what I love about Tucker Carlson, and I know you're like, how how are you bringing this up? What I love about Tucker is you can hear three different pieces on one topic, and then you hear Tucker, and you go, I've never, I didn't know all that, and that's what I'm about to do for you with Andrew Huberman. You may have heard of the hit piece, but why is this happening to Andrew Huberman now? I'm going to play Joe Rogan for you, then I'm going to take you through some things, some clips, then I'm going to play Joe Rogan for you again, And then it's all going to make more sense what's going on with Andrew Huberman. I guarantee you that. Let's get into Joe Rogan first. And just so you guys know, I have a new channel. It is called Coach Colin Media. Coach Colin Media. Go and get that channel. Subscribe to that channel. We are doing things other than Rogan content on that channel. Again, it is called Coach Colin Media. Let's get into it. Life might have turned them into this. Life, shitty parents, yeah, bad neighborhood, and then sometimes it's just genes. Yeah, sometimes you get wacky genes, man. Yeah, you know, sometimes people are mentally ill right from the jump. Yeah, and I don't think people like to admit that, but that's that's a fact. Yeah, you know. Yeah, how much can you do with that? Not much. <clears throat> and then when it comes to like medication, what is the medication doing? It is it dulling the mind so that the impulses don't come out? Is it uh, ramping up your dopamine so you don't want to do those things? Like, yeah, I was wondering that with like Prozac. Like, I didn't realize how many people I knew that were on Prozac. What's he saying? <sighs> yeah or nay? Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> Let's just do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Speaking of. Mm. Speaking of psychos, speaking of, of of people that are potentially bad, yeah, that do not have your good uh, good interests in, at heart, and will take advantage of you, and maybe are pathological in their desires to crush. So we're talk- talking about Andrew Huberman's situation, his situation, not Huberman. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that was left out of that article. People know, I assume everybody here knows exactly what happened. So there's an article that Andrew Huberman, an ex, got a hold of a reporter and said that he's a, f- a philanderer, he's doing all these terrible things, he's a bad guy. Yeah. And so they write this long article. What they left out was that the person who accused him of all this, first of all, was being investigated by the DOJ for fraud and is in the middle of that right now. It's a very serious case. I would name the case, but that would... Like, they made the lady anonymous, which is also crazy. Like, you could have an anonymous person who attacks this famous person, yeah. with, which is essentially, whether it's true, what the things she's saying are true or not true, the stuff she left out, the DOJ oh, stuff. Oh, that's when he breaks it off. Exactly. He breaks it off. The DOJ scorned. contacts him because they're investigating this woman. And you think that that would be, like, maybe the first paragraph You would think article. that would at least be a part of the article. Yeah. If it was a real piece of news. Yeah. You would say, oh, this is complicated. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so what do you think it is? Do you think it could come from pharmaceutical companies? I don't think there's zero influence. You know, I mean, I think for sure. Look, with the stuff that happened to me That's what I was going to ask. What, what do you think it comes from? That was 100% influenced by pharmaceutical drug companies. Political interest, too? Yeah, well, they're all tied in together yeah. because they fund them. Yeah. So you've got pharmaceutical drug interests that, A, fund the network, yeah. right? They pay for so much of the advertisement, So right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you now can't just cut that the advertisers. Yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah. cut. If, if the news said no more pharmaceutical drugs, like, let's imagine if the government says this. Yeah. The government says no more pharmaceutical drug contributions to super PACs, no more pharmaceutical drugs ads on te- television shows and newspapers, no more. Then you have to fill a massive void mm-hmm. that that's missing from those ads. And you're gonna have to bring in Toyota trucks and fucking all these different things. Yeah. Okay, so they touch on it a little bit. I don't know why he didn't go deeper into it, especially if that was Andrew Huberman that was on the phone, 
But let's go into the situation of Andrew Huberman just a little bit. So if you don't know, Lex Friedman was one of the first people to show support to Andrew Huberman. He said, keep going, brother. Do you see that right here? He also said, it's heartbreaking to see a hit piece written about my friend Andrew Huberman. He said, I know him very well, and I can definitely say that he is a great human being, scientist, and educator. Now, there's just a whole bunch of stuff just talking about him being a real ladies' man, basically. So, Cigar, I should say Sagar, it's not Cigar, Sagar is going to tell you a bunch about what this is and what he thinks about it. Then we're going to move on to Brett Cooper because Brett Cooper, Sagar is going to show you the facts of what's going on. You know, the, the, the more, the more dense stuff. Brett goes into the actual lady stuff, the things that he's accused of doing to six different women. This is nothing to do with assault whatsoever. He's basically just a ladies man. And then we're going to jump into the reasons that this is actually taking place with him right now. Let's get into that. Has bigger cultural implications. Let's start with the smear job itself. New York Magazine, which is a subsidiary of Vox Media, published a front page story on Monday morning titled Falling for Dr. Huberman, the private and public seductions of the world's biggest pop neuroscientist. Now you might expect the story to detail perhaps some health lies or bad advice possibly that was proven from the most popular health podcast in the world. And and you open up that story, you find 8,000 words. After reading them all, you will come away with this information. Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is unmarried, engaged in simultaneous relationships with up to six women, according to his ex-girlfriends and lovers. I'm not kidding. And if you want, you can read the entire piece for yourself. It exhaustively details a lead up of how Huberman has self-admitted to therapy and a tough childhood, then immediately begins to parse in detail the scurrilous allegations of his ex-girlfriends who apparently have formed their own group chat to try and take him down. Down. What is crazier is what I then found out by asking those behind the scenes. Now, according to those familiar with New York Magazine's original reach out to Dr. Huberman, the vibe started out quite a bit different. The New York Magazine's original email, which I obtained and is so unbelievable that I was given permission to read a few quotes for you here on the show, is in August of 2023, New York Magazine reporter Carrie Howley emailed saying, quote, I am writing in the hopes that one of my big stories this year might be the phenomenon of Dr. Andrew Huberman. When my editor suggested I look into him, I basically shot him down. It didn't seem like the kind of thing I would be into. I listened to a single episode, predictably, months later, I'm fully addicted and devoted. She adds, continues, due to some of the episodes that deal with stress, I'm taking care of my mental health, it was almost like I couldn't engage or become interested until Dr. Huberman made it all profoundly concrete and chemical. I know. I'm far from the only person to have experienced this change. She adds a few more buttery things about how much she loved the podcast, and she said and got no reply. Now, the story should have died there, right? No, 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 no. Suddenly, the Huberman love affair turned into something very different. Months later, those familiar say that Huberman's colleagues, his family, and his friends from high school began to be inundated with emails from New York Magazine requesting anonymous information on Dr. Huberman. One of the emails reads as follows. Subject line, off the record conversation with New York Mag. Email text, quote, in the interest of trans transparency, there have been serious allegations made about Andrew as well as the academic work that he is up to these days. Now, hold on a second. What serious allegations? That he was not faithful to his girlfriend? Why is that pertinent to speak to his colleagues about? And what about his work at Stanford? What are you talking about? Here it turns out, nothing. Despite the author's best efforts to smear Andrew Huberman's work at Stanford and presenting him as some no-show at his own lab, insinuating that something was afoot because of its transition, Stanford itself stood up for him in the piece saying his lab was fully operational, nothing she, she was insinuating was true. As for these, quote, serious allegations, again, literally, it is from his personal life. And where did these allegations come from? Well, it doesn't take a genius to see that the sources of this story are jilted lovers of Andrew Huberman's. And it appears, based upon my conversations again with those familiar, that the reporter was able to make contact with them by literally trolling for negative comments on Reddit threads and Instagram comments. So the timeline 
is basically this. She asked for a profile and pretended to be a fan. He said no, or basically didn't reply. Then she connects with these jilted lovers, leaving anonymous comments on the internet. Then those claims, including incorrect ones about his work at Stanford, are presented to colleagues, friends, and family of Huberman's, including his own father, to react to. Any positive comments attesting to his character were not included in the story. The full allegations of the women were printed with complete credibility, even though many have exhibited some pretty crazy behavior in their retaliation against him. So those are the specifics of how this all came to be. But let me just put this aside right now and just say this. Let now, I just wanted to get to you that like that's the meat and potatoes of what was going on. That's the dark side of how they do a story, why they choose to do it, this dishonesty that's behind it. Now let's move on to the actual things he did with these ladies. Okay? Now, I'm sm it's not a good thing that they did this. But I'm smiling because it made me like Andrew Huberman just a little bit more. Listen, just a little bit more. Now I'm a one woman. I got my wife and my wife is just my wife. That's it. She has my eyes. That's it. But I'll, what? Whew. Listen to this. Let's Sorry. go. But anyway, after these cheating allegations, this woman apparently moved out of their house that they shared together very angrily, but stayed in a relationship with Huberman. Apparently stayed in an exclusive relationship. Huberman says that that is false and that they separated at that point. We were on a break. We were on a break. Oh. Yeah, we were on a break. But this woman continued to hang on and she found women that he had slept with or had been dating at some point in his life, collecting them all, and has now been able to use them for this article, helping to share all of their stories. They have a group chat now of all six of them compiled timelines and screenshots. They became friends. It's like the Huberman girl gang. Boo. What? Weird. It's just a bit odd, if I'm going to be real. But then the article got into him allegedly juggling all of these women and how it happened based on their POV, which like we have to be real is very, very funny. But they wrote, there was a day in Texas when after Sarah, that's the original girl, left his hotel, Andrew slept with Mary and texted Eve. They found days in which he would text nearly identical pictures of himself to two of them at the same time. They realized that the day before he had moved in with Sarah in Berkeley, he had slept with Mary and he had also been with her in December of 2023, the weekend before Sarah caught him on the couch with a sixth woman. They realized that on March 21st, 2021, a day of admittedly impressive logistical jujitsu while Sarah was in Berkeley, Andrew had flown Mary from Texas to LA to stay with him in Topanga. While Mary was there visiting from thousands of miles away, he left her with Costello. He drove to a coffee shop where he met Eve. They had a serious talk about their relationship. They thought they were in a good place. He wanted to make it work. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. That's just chaos. Again, we have no idea whether this is real or not. There were Listen, that's that is that is the basics of like the worst things that he's done. When you hear about the Andrew Huberman piece from the New York magazine, that's the worst of what he's done. But I have to say, there's a new top G in town, that's for sure. Oh gosh. If Andrew Huberman really did all that, there's a new top G. Listen, again, again. I'm not gonna do things like that. But when I'm listening to this guy, because I always listen to Andrew Huberman, and I'm like, this guy's such a nerd. Love listening to his podcast. And then I hear this, and I'm like, oh, wow. This is the other side of this guy. Jeez. Wow. Very, it's, it's, it's just a real funny thing. And that's what they went after him for. This is where the smear campaign started. But again, like I said at the beginning of this, why are they doing this to him? Who cares if he was sleeping with a bunch of women and... Why are they getting a group chat? And this one woman who got that group chat together, I hope you're listening to Rogan, she is being investigated by the DOJ. Now, why does that matter? They also touched on some other things about pharmaceuticals and whatnot in the first clip. Let's move on. This is what happened to Andrew Huberman just, just uh, seven months ago, I believe. This is what happened to him. Let's listen here. This predetermined group of uh, questions and answers that you, you know, that these are, these are, a, they're, they're part of the ideology. You must subscribe to them wholeheartedly, wholesale. And and even by you, like apparently, so Lex mentioned that uh, Andrew Huberman's yeah. Wikipedia page, because you 
platformed RFK. I'm like, the guy's a Kennedy. Okay, first of all, he's a Democrat. Right? Well, this is all that happened. If you don't, Andrew Huberman commented on a post that I made about Robert Kennedy Jr. He said, I think this is great. I hope more presidential candidates do long form podcasts. That's it. And so Wikipedia removed the research sec- research section of his page. Hmm. He's got 70 public oh, yeah. published papers. It's highly cited. He's, he's, he's very well respected. And they removed that because they had decided that they were going to, I don't know what they're thought process was what their motivation was but it appears that what they're doing is punishing him for what he said by labeling him in a very in, um, they're maligning him in multiple different ways i thought about saying like well you know who else joe rogan had on this guy named peter hotez yeah well i, I try to have a lot of people on <laughs> yeah, but, so but it's I'd, not there's nothing wrong with having yeah. a guy who's running for president uh, on a podcast to discuss things like you, you what are you talking about it's nonsense yeah and the way they did that to huberman when he was just saying that he hopes more presidential candidates do long firm form podcasts that's you can't do that mm-hmm. that's that's like that's tyrants do shit like that that's horrible if i could you know and you can't do stuff like that but they did they made sure to take away all his research so he didn't look like a, um, for lack of a better word, a viable scientist. You know, Lex Friedman at the beginning, I showed you that quote. He said he's a scientist and an educator. When they take away that research, they kind of take away a pillar of what he needs in order to be seen as authentic, to be seen as real, a real scientist. They remove all of that. They change history that way. Wikipedia did that. You know, when I first heard about this seven months ago, I remember a bunch of people in the comments being like, you shouldn't even trust Wikipedia. Like, why Why are you even using Wikipedia? And I, I had no idea. And then I learned about this and I was like, oh, I get it. And then I looked deeper into it and who's able to change things when they're able to change things. Certain people can't change things. There's this... There's this bias committee that will be like, this thing will be history and everyone will see this in terms of Wikipedia. And then there'll be other things where they say people will not see this and will take this away. And that's what they did to Andrew Huberman after he commented on the Robert F. Kennedy podcast. Now, that podcast, we all know what that podcast was mainly focused around. It was focused around the pharmaceutical industry because that was, you know, among other things. But Robert F. Kennedy was known for that, and Joe Rogan wanted to understand his stance on that more than anything. So when Andrew Huberman said this was great, they took that as him endorsing Robert F. Kennedy, someone who cannot be endorsed, who is not acceptable as president. They have decided that. Again, the woman who started all this is being investigated by the DOJ. This is not the only claim against Andrew Huberman. New podcaster Andrew Huberman is accused of uh, pushing uh, uh, persuado science, pseudo science, by top doctors, including casting doubt on life saving. You can fill in the blank there after reports of his love rat behavior. Absolutely wild. In this article, it talks about a procedure that everybody gets seasonally. And Andrew Huberman talked about how he does not get that. He does not do that. He's been saying things like this in his podcast. He's honest. He brings forth research. It's not just his opinion. It's not how he feels. You know, I talk about my opinion. I'll bring up facts, but I do my opinion thing a lot. Tucker does his opinion thing a lot. Andrew Huberman is a legit scientist. He doesn't go into his opinion a lot. He goes based on facts and he's actually doing the research. He has an actual lab with actual employees. He is the real deal. So when he all of a sudden starts saying what he does and doesn't do in regards to life saving fill in the blank, that's when all this starts happening. Real hardcore. So if you didn't know what was going on with Andrew Huberman, that's what's going on with Andrew Huberman. He's at a point right now where they have decided that what he is doing is unacceptable, that the things he's saying are unacceptable and that he can't be seen as a real scientist, for lack of a better word. So I will end it with this last little blip from Joe Rogan once again. Let's go here. Uh, worth it, you know. It feels that's justified. also why it's very difficult to 
to like cast someone in an unfavorable light that people already know. Yeah. Like like the Huberman thing. We try to take a distorted version of that person and say this is who they really they talk, are. He talks to them four hours a week. Yeah. They You're not gonna change the way that they feel about him. He also talks to other people like you or me where we're fucking around, joking around, you get yeah. to see the real him. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. not just the distribution of information. Yeah. It's also like this is the guy. Yeah. This is who he is. Yeah. He's gonna be okay. Oh, he's be better than ever. Yeah. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. And it's good that people see it's good that people see that he's at a position where they want to attack him. Yeah, that means he's doing something good. Well, it's a, he's a target, and if you're popular and famous, you're a target. And if you're going to be the the type of person that goes after those people, that's like that's a, a dark path. It's mm. not a good path, mm. and you become a target too. They they find you. Well, that's yeah, like yeah. What we were saying is, I think it's important that when these people are writing these clearly biased hit pieces, that they're also recognized for what they've done. Yeah, and the world will see that if you put out something like this, there is a cost. Yeah. You're not doing it with impunity. It's also there's a cost in your own mind. You know what you did. These motherfuckers, I don't think they care. I, 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 it, it, I they, think they do and they don't. I think they think they can do it because they're supposed to do it because that's their job. But I think once the impact comes back their way. They're like, I don't want to pay this price. Yeah, the blowback is awful. And that yeah. blowback stays on you. Yep. It doesn't, people will Google that for years to come. They'll yeah. know when you write something else. I'll oh, never this trust is that person you that did again. that. This is, yeah. yeah. And then they'll dig into your past, man. They'll find some things that you did. They'll find some people that are upset at you, mm -hmm. you know? And it's also, it's just like negative energy. You're putting mm -hmm. out negative energy. People that build people up, people that build people up through their own version of reality. So I just wanted to play that last part. That's the last thing that they say about Huberman in the podcast. I have not listened to it fully. There's still another... 56 minutes i'm at three hours if you want to hear those remarks timestamp i still got another 56 minutes to listen to but that is what's really going on with huberman and honestly when this first came out i didn't bother reading the article because i've seen this with tucker i've seen this with so many different people and it's always the same thing and the accusers are anonymous you know just like with tucker you know, his text messages got released. Who released it? Oh, I don't know. You know, we've, we've seen this time and time again. You've seen this with Jordan Peterson. You've seen this with Tucker. You've seen this. It's just the name. There's too many names. It's wild. So as soon as I saw this happen with Andrew Huberman, I was like, oh, okay. Because I, I already did a video on this. So I was like, I get it. I see what's happening now. He said too much. And like Andrew said, He's going to be better than ever because people are going to start to understand, oh, it's not up. It's not really up for debate. This guy's real. He's a scientist. He always brings facts and they're still doing this to him. That means he is somebody to listen to. <sighs> so very interesting to see that this is happening to him. Hopefully it stops. If all they have is him just kind of girl hopping for lack of a better term just going from here to there to there to there you know whatever for me i'm still gonna listen to him i still like the things that he has to say listen go listen to andrew huberman's podcast go listen to a podcast with him and joe rogan him and lex friedman and see what you think of the guy that's that's all you can do when these things come out Go see for yourself. That's the best advice that I could ever give you is that when someone gets canceled, go see for yourself. Go check it out. Somebody tells you this person did that or this or that. I, I always bring this up on the channel. Someone told me that Jordan Peterson was racist. And for two years, I or three maybe, I believed them. Anytime I'd see one of his videos, click off, wouldn't listen to anything he had to say. I finally just came across a clip where he was very emotional and he was emotional about the same things that make me emotional. And then I decided to dive into his content and it absolutely changed my life. Forget what these publications have to say about people. It's all, it's always dog shit, always. And that, that's, that's why they're dying out. That's why they're dying out. These, these publications are just trash in what they choose to do to people and who they choose to do it to. And in the words of, I think it was Jimmy Dore that said it, you don't get fired for, for lying. Nobody's getting fired for lying. You can find many talking heads in the mainstream space that have lied. You don't get fired for lying. You get fired for telling the truth. And the same thing goes with this independent space. You don't get attacked for lying. You get attacked for telling the truth. 
It's exactly what's going on. So anyways, guys, that is what's going on with Andrew Huberman. Don't forget the other channel where we're talking about non-Rogan topics. Coach Colin Media, hit that subscribe button on both of the channels if you haven't hit it on this one already. Like, subscribe, share, and I'm out.